Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Blaze Hollow, coming at you again with another What If Deku had a symbiote. But before I get into all that, I have to bring up two announcements. The first is I want to apologize immensely to the entire fan base for the audio quality of part one and probably part two. I'm doing all of this off of my cell phone. I do not have a computer or proper recording equipment, so I'm doing the best I can to help out everybody. Second is I want all of you to know that I've actually taken over part of Orion's work by taking over two scripts, which will be Arcane Angel and What If Deku Had a Symbiote. Those are the two that I'm working on right now. But in my opinion, I think things should be done in a group of three because, you know, the big three of anime. They shot for the stars and they did great. So what I'm thinking is I'll probably talk with the guys and put up a poll and do my own personal script on the channel. If you guys would like that, please leave a comment down below in this part and let me know what you think. With all that said, start that intro. I don't think you can become a hero. Alright, let's have a little bit of a recap. In the last part, Izuku actually was able to get a quirk, but in a different format. It was a symbiote. After the symbiote crashed land to Earth in the park and it found its way to Izuku. A little bit of a conversation in the dreamscape, agreeing to work together, and as Deku celebrated his birthday that morning, to the park to go play with some friends, when he actually ended up having to stop Bakugo from picking on a little girl who turned out to be Momo, to protect her from Bakugo along with himself, his symbiote activated, allowing it to wrap around his body and give him a special suit, which freaked out everybody. As Bakugo and his lackeys ran off, Asashi actually wanted to rush Deku to the doctor. But before they left, Deku asked Momo if she was okay, and she said yes. Then Deku got rushed off to the doctor to see what was going on with him. Now we are up to date with the story. Let's see where it continues. Hasashi and Deku got to the doctor's office, and they wait to be called on as Inko showed up. As she walked in, it was Izuku turned to the doctor, and they ran. When they concluded the test, the doctor came in with the results. Dr. Amada looked over the files and then looked back at the family, letting them know, Your son has a quirk. It will manifest soon. Hasashi actually motioned for the doctor to look at him for a second, letting him know, It already has manifested. We wanted to know if you've seen it before. Yuku powers up the symbiote, completely covering his body except for his face. Editor's note, hopefully Orion will actually put a picture up on the screen so you know what the suit looks like. Dr. Yamada looks surprised. I've only heard of this once before. A similar case appeared, but it happened in America. Inko, getting very curious about this whole situation, asked, Is this his quirk or something else? The symbiote then oozed out, revealing itself. Allow me to explain. I am a creature known as a symbiote. Everyone was surprised when the tendrils formed a face and began to speak. Zuku smiled at this development. Hello, symbiote. The symbiote smiled back. Hello, Izuku. Now allow me to explain. I came from outer space. I was on a meteorite when I crashed on this planet. I searched for a host and found this boy. See, my species is peaceful, but if our host is corrupt, then they will corrupt us as well. Asashi actually gets worried for his son. What do you want with my son? The symbiote tilts its head in confusion. I want to fulfill his dream of becoming a hero. There was no guile found in the words of the symbiote. Everyone wasn't so convinced, but Izuku felt the words of the symbiote were true. Then Izuku got the symbiote's attention. Hey symbiote, I didn't know I had these tendrils. They look like whips. The symbiote looked at the child ready to explain everything. Well, these can be used for combat purposes, offense or defense. Izuku began to mutter, the adults found it cute, but what Izuku was doing was trying to find a name for the symbiote when it hit him like a brick. Whiplash. Lashing laser. Symbiote, may I call you Lasher? The symbiote smiled at this idea. If that's what you wish to call me, from this day forth you may now know me as Lasher. The doctor labeled this symbiotic quirk as Lasher. 
disappointment ended and Izuku was happy and so were his parents. When they arrived home, they prepared a small feast for Izuku's birthday. When the food was ready, Izuku rushed to the table, his mother bringing in his birthday cake while his father photographed the event. After they ate, it was time for gifts. Inko presented her gift. It was the latest All Might action figure. Izuku was excitedly happy to receive the gift. Izuku's father didn't know if his son would like the gift he was about to give him or not. As Asashi walked forward to his son, Izuku, I got you this special gift, but I'm not sure you'll like it. Izuku had a childish smile on his face. Everything from dad has to be a great gift. This tugged at Asashi's heartstrings, so he handed his son a necklace with a locket on it. Izuku looked confused. Asashi looked at his son. This necklace is special. As Hasashi opened the locket, there on the inside was a picture of his mom and dad. The other side was empty. On the outside was an inscription, with great power comes great responsibility. Hasashi was excited to continue explaining, one side is empty because that's where you place a picture of you and a special somebody. Every time that it's open, it will remind you why you fight the hard battles that you do to become a hero. Izuku getting excited. I love it, Dad. Thank you. But what does this mean? Hashi rubs the back of his neck, realizing that this is going to be very difficult to explain to a child so young. Izuku, you have been blessed with a great power and a great responsibility to be the hero that people can count on when they need you most. Izuku jumping up and down in excitement. I promise to try and be the best hero I can be. That afternoon flew by quickly. It was 8 p.m. and Izuku was ready for bed. As he fell asleep, he thought about everything that happened today. Inside of Lasher's mind, Izuku, I promise to help you reach your goal. It will be a tough road, but I will be there to help you out. The next morning, Izuku woke up happy after his special day, so he went downstairs to be greeted by his mom and dad. Hisashi was reading the newspaper while Inko was preparing breakfast. When both parents spotted their son, they immediately said, Good morning. Izuku going over to the table and sitting down and then staring at both his parents. Good morning, mom and dad. As the family of three sat down and enjoyed breakfast, the house phone began to ring and Inko answered the phone. And then Asashi's cell phone rang after four minutes. Inko actually gets very sad when she's done with her phone call as she goes over to Izuku. I'm sorry, Izuku. I wanted to spend the day with you and your father, but the hospital called, telling me that they're short staff. She then put his hand on his son's head. Sorry, buddy. I wanted to spend time with you and your mother, but I got called into the office today. Both parents realized that they had no one to watch Izuku until they both made a drastic decision. Hasashi then looks at Deku. Lasher. A tendril appears with a face on it. It was the symbiote known as Lasher. He was confused, wondering what he was being called for. Hello, Mr. Midoriya. How may I be of assistance to you? Sashi didn't like this idea, but knew he had to go along with it. I was wondering if you could watch over Izuku. My wife and I have to go to work, and we have no one else to watch after him. Lasher just looks at him blankly. Izuku is my host. I have to protect him. If he dies, I will die. So without saying, I will look after the boy. Izuku's mother and father got ready for work. He asked if he can go to the park. They trusted him since the park was only three minutes away from the house. They gave him a spare house key and everyone left going their own way. Izuku was at the park. Only person there was Momo Yayorozu. The same girl who he met on his special day, he noticed she was crying. Izuku looked at her sad, not wanting to see her cry. What's the matter, Momo? She looked at him, but still having tears run down her face. Midoriya, I'm sad because I have to move away. My dad got a new job, and we have to move. I thought if I came to the park, I would see you again to say goodbye. Izuku started to feel bad hearing this news. Will you ever come back here? Momo had a face of disappointment. I don't know. You are the nicest boy I've ever met. I hope we get to meet again someday. Izuku, without fail, carried a small backpack 
with a few of his toys he liked to play with at the park, with one of these toys being the first All Might action figure he got from his parents. If you're going to move, then I want you to have this action figure. It's my favorite one that I own. Momo began to cry because it was the nicest thing any boy has done for her. She then reveals her quirk to Izuku as she makes three things. First was a small camera that printed out its pictures. Second was a small figure that resembled her. And the third was a small figure that represented for Izuku. Momo then smiled. Here's this small figurine. It's for you. You keep while I keep one that looks like you. That way we won't ever forget about each other. The camera is so we can take a picture and keep a copy for each other. As the two kids began to take the picture, Momo heard a voice of her parents saying it's time to go. So she left waving goodbye. She had tears falling from her eyes. Izuku then planted the copy of the picture together in the empty locket slot. Mr. Yairozu, what's that you got there, Momo? Momo smiled faintly. It was a goodbye gift from my first friend I made here. Her father was sad knowing that he had to do this to her. I'm sorry, honey, that we have to move around because of my job. Momo just nodded. It's all right, Dad. I hope to meet him again someday. Her mother just gives Momo a hug. Thank you for being so understanding, dear. And who knows, if it's meant to be, you two will find each other again. Izuku decided not to stay at the park after saying goodbye to Momo. But what he did instead was go back home. A tendril popped out, revealing Lasher. The kid, don't worry, if it's meant to be, you'll see her again someday. Izuku appreciating these words as he looks at Lasher. Thanks, I appreciate the words of comfort. Ten years later. It was the last day of middle school, and the teacher walked in with a stack of career papers. I was going to hand out these career forms, but why bother? I know all of you kids want to go into the hero course. As all the students showed off their quirks, one loud mouth sounded off, revealing to be Katsuki Bakugo. Hey teach, don't lump me in with these extras. I'm going to be the new number one hero. As everyone was shooting glares at Katsuki for being arrogant, the teacher spoke up. Uh, Katsuki, that's correct, you applied for UA and did very well on the exams. There is a chance you are going to make it. Oh wait a moment. Izuku Midori also applied for UA and got in on recommendation. Bakugo was completely surprised to hear this. What? How did that nerd get a recommendation? Izuku speaking up, feeling a little bit pleased with himself. I am smarter and stronger than anyone in this school. The teacher nodded in agreement. Can't argue with him there. He's been ranked number one in all subjects since first year. The school day ended, Katsuki was angry and his lackeys tried to calm him down by going to the arcade. Before Izuku left school to go home, he pulled out his necklace and opened it. The locket seeing a picture of his parents and of him and Momo as kids. Next to the locket was a small figurine of Momo. She made for him so he wouldn't forget about her. Inside of Izuku's mind, I get the feeling that I'll be able to see Momo soon and I hope she'll remember me. Somewhere else. The girl was trying to catch up with her friends so they could chat. Hey Momo, can we go home together and hang out? Momo smiled back at her. Sure, that would be fun. So Momo has become very popular and loved by everyone. She has received confessions from guys at her school and people from the shopping district near her house. One of the girls that Momo was hanging out with asked, So Momo, I heard that some of the guys asked you out again today. Did you accept their confession? Then shook her head. No, I could not accept their feelings for me. It would be cruel if I accept them and not be able to return their love. The girl from the group then wanted to ask, Are you engaged? I mean, it is to be expected. You are a part of a rich family in Japan. Momo just shakes her head again. No, I am not engaged. It's just I hope to meet a special someone who I've been waiting for a very long time for. Both of Momo's friends were curious about the guy who was able to capture her heart. As they arrived at Momo's house, they went to Momo's room, 
for some girl talk. When they got to Momo's room, they always wondered why she kept an old All Might figurine in a display case. Why do you still keep this old toy in a display case? Momo just began to smile as she looked at it. This toy belonged to the special person I mentioned a little while ago. The other girl got curious and wanted to know, why did he give you this toy? Momo got a little bit sad. We moved around a lot and I couldn't make a lot of friends. He protected me from bullies that were picking on me. When I told him I was moving away, he gave me the toy in memory so I wouldn't forget about him. Back with Izuku. After reminiscing about the past, Izuku took a different route home than usual, so it resulted with him going through the dark tunnel. His symbiote sense was tingling as a thing of sludge came out of a manhole cover. Damn sludge, I'm looking for someone like you, boy, to be the perfect meat shield. That's where I'm going to leave it off today, guys. Sorry to leave you off on a cliffhanger, but it happens. Make sure to leave a comment down below, and make sure to leave a like. But with all that said, I'm done. See you guys next time.